For episode two, we're going to be modeling the kitchen overhead cabinets. We're going to be doing the bench top and all the cupboards and all that kind of thing. When it comes to kitchens and um, the real architectural features, I like to design that and model that. So we're going to be looking at timber joinery. Everything's going to be built in. If you guys have seen my Instagram, all my kitchen layouts are pretty similar that's what we're going to be doing today um and yeah let's get into it so this is where we ended up last week um i think it's pretty good progress we got some curtains in we got some basic modeling and we looked at lighting and we got some couches in so it was a pretty good start but we're just going to get into a little bit more detail so i kind of envisioned this being the fridge over here and then Maybe this just being um, just solid kind of joinery. Um, by joinery, I mean, you know, like timber. Um, it's almost like a plywood with a timber veneer on top. And that's pretty typical for high-end architecture. And um, I do use quite a lot of that in my designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a cube. And we are going to start by creating a sheet of timber veneer. So the sheets kind of come in, you know, different standard lengths um, and I'm going to go for a um, 2.7 high and I think the, um, the X value I'm going to do um, 1.2 wide and then we're going to make this uh, 20 mil thick. Uh, no, that's not 20 mil, that's 200 mil. Zero two. Yep, that's the one. So we've got a standard, well not standard, I mean when you're talking high-end architecture it's kind of the opposite of standard so they can do whatever they want but this is kind of a good a good place to start this kind of size and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this up, well not cut it, I'm just going to shape it to um, what I'm going to be using it for. So these end bits are going to be the same so I'm going to bring one, duplicate it, bring one across that one's actually going to be a bit bigger to terminate where the where the curtains are. Um, and by the way, guys, let me know in the comments whereabouts you are in the world because you're probably not from New Zealand, my country. So I'm just curious, um, you know, where everyone's from. It's quite cool to um, to be able to produce videos and share with you guys because, like, I don't know, everyone's um, in their own country and. Um, very global it's just super super cool um and also let me know if there's any suggestions that you guys want me to uh you know to do a project on or to do a tutorial on um have a look at my instagram if there's something that you're you're curious about what I, how i did that like just let me know because i'll do a behind the scenes of it so i'm just kind of sussing out this um this middle part i think for the overhead cabinets, I do want them to be a little bit thinner, um, uh, a little bit uh, narrower. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into X-ray mode. And I'm just going to chuck a array modifier onto this. And I'm going to array it out. And this is a trick I do quite a lot with this kind of thing. So I'll array it a few. I'll array it a few times, and you can see it's kind of ending over the top of where, you know past where I want it to go. So I've got two choices. I can shrink the original to make that fit, or I could take it back to where it was, and I could reduce one of the arrays counts, and then I could make that bigger. Now I actually feel like I prefer the before so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this and bring it in and these gaps I feel like they're pretty good um, the gaps between things when it comes to interior design are some of the most important things you can do um, we call them well <laughs> I'm not an interior designer but in design language they're called shadow gaps and the more you can have the better you, you can go overboard but it just adds if you have a very simple design it just adds that kind of beautiful detail that um is so elegant and and, and refined so that seems to be pretty good if i go back to my camera angle 
I'm just looking at the little micro details. I think I might add a little trim at the top. Um, so maybe I, I'll drop this down like 50 mil. Minus 0.5. Nope. Uh, minus 0 0.05. Did that work? Minus 0 0.05. Yep, there we go. And then I'm going to do the same for... Uh, will I? I'm going to move this down slightly less. I'm going to go minus 0 0.025. So it's half of the 50 mil. I'm going to do the same for this. And what the reason why is because I'm going to have that 25 mil gap as the shadow gap of everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in um, a little trim at the top for the cabinets. And I'm just designing this as I go, by the way. Um, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, so all of these are pretty standard um, decisions when it comes to the design. Um, yeah, that feels pretty good. So I've kind of got the bare bones of that. And what I like to do is just hide the range hood in the center of the, um, the overhead cabinets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just duplicate this array. I'm going to bring it down. Okay. And I'm going to lift. So at the bottom of kitchens, if you, by the way, if you want to learn about interior design, just have a look at your own kitchen. Um, and have a look at what happens down here underneath the cabinets. Usually there's a gap. It's called a kickback. So I'm going to move this up point um one four is that point one four no minus point one oh what's going on here minus point one four no which way point one four okay so that's a one forty mil sh um kickback it's gonna say shadow gap <laughs> um and what I'm gonna do here so we've got that gap there now is Basically, this is the building block from the previous episode, and we are going to still keep this, okay? But this is going to be like a black paint, and you're going to have the timber joinery, and then in the gaps between the, um, the pieces of timber, you're going to see a little gap, and that's what you see behind it. And that's just quite a nice technique for um, just adding a little bit of refinement. So I'm just going to click on the bottom of this. We made this in the last episode. If you guys want a, a, re, um, a refresher, have a look at that. Um, so I'm just going to move it up. And then what I'm going to do is this, like, don't even worry about UVs for this kind of thing because we're literally just going to make a black albedo. So I'm just going to slice it in. Normally it's like 75 mils or something, but I'm just going to extrude this down now. Okay. Just like that. And then that's your shadow gap. Not your shadow gap. <laughs> that's your kickback. I guess it could be a shadow gap too. So on the bench top, oh, let's get in here. We are going to lower this about 20 mil, minus 0 0.2. And then we're going to lower this black paint material. We don't actually want to see that anymore like on the top at all and I'm going to duplicate this island bench because we haven't done any UV so all of these are just boxes okay so don't be precious about just when you model just yeah I mean architectural modeling is so <laughs> so basic that you don't really need to worry about the topology unless you're you're working with curves um cool that's why I love it actually because it's like, I'm not a great modeler in Blender. I just, I know how to make architecture. So it's it's a nice, simple form of 3D, 3D art. It, it's beautiful. Maybe that's why it gets a little bit of criticism on um, the different online forums and stuff. Arcviz is kind of, you know, oh, it's too basic. But yeah, it is. But, you know, when the... In terms of 3D art, there's this perception that 
the longer things take and the more difficult they are to achieve, the better they are. But I have the opinion that it's the final render, if it's beautiful, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what kind of effort you put in. You know, it's just if if you're able to express your vision, then it's a successful render, you know. You see people posting on the subreddit, um, the Blender subreddit and the ArcViz subreddit, and they're like, oh, yeah, this, I just finished this, uh, and it was this beautiful render, and it took them, oh, yeah, I just did this on my work break. <laughs> and they, they obviously didn't, but they're boasting about, I don't know how little time it took, but it doesn't matter about time. You could spend months on something, and it would be worth it. Anyway, rant over. So we're looking pretty good. We've got that um, little uh, bench top kind of done. And you can see there's a little gap between the cabinets. That's a nice little shadow gap. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make this smaller now. So I'm going to half the size. So what's this? This is 740. We're going to go 370. <laughs> My math is not good right now. Minus 0.37, I think. Okay, we're gonna do another trick. We're gonna, we're gonna array this vertically now. It's arrayed horizontally five times, but we can actually add an, an add another array modifier. Um, and we're gonna go on the Z axes. Okay, so we're going to do that same trick. We're going to make sure that we set the gap that we want first. That's maybe a little bit... Eh, no, that feels okay. And then we're going to go into the edit mode and we're going to bring this down so that the top of the array is what we want it to be. Cool. Now, for these... Um, I'm just trying to think. It feels okay. But I actually want this gap to be bigger because that's going to be like a handleless kind of. And actually, I want the top to be bigger. I want the horizontal lines in here to be the main design feature. And bear, <laughs> bear in mind, in this view, you're not actually going to see much of that at all. So it's always worth going back to the actual, um, to the render view and to really be like okay am i gonna am i gonna actually see this because you could put so much detail into like all these things that you're just not gonna see so it's a waste of time you'd get better at modeling but yeah i don't know so that feels pretty good um what i'm gonna do is for the handles i like to um so okay well let, let's just tackle this fridge real quick what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm just going to add a little vertical um, trim because in the interior design it's all about the trim. That's where you add the little details and it just makes things look nice and, and thought about. So I'm going to add a trim and we're just looking at the top here. That trim is going to be the same gap as before i'm being pretty liberal about this i'm not you know with the shadow gaps i'm not like super you know focused on it um but that looks pretty good i'm gonna make a quick handle and i'm gonna try to keep this episode short um you know i'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to do shorter episodes but do a few more of them and keep them more focused over one topic um, it was my last course I did with the exterior render. I think the episodes were maybe a bit too long for each one. They're about 40 minutes, but I want to just keep this down to the 15, 20 mark. So today we're not going to do any texturing or anything. We're just going to model. And I'm just making a handle right now. And the handles I make are pretty straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the top do the same to the bottom just I just guesstimate it to be honest um, and then I'm going to select the top and bottom faces closest to the to the fridge 
and I'm going to extrude that out and I'm just going to snap onto that bench top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bevel to that and by holding Alt and Shift we can select multiple edge loops and it just makes things so much quicker. Um, if you guys are really new, check out Blender Guru's donut tutorial. He'll teach you all sorts of stuff. And I'm not really focusing on um, like super beginners. I'm more intermediate. So um, once you've gone to a good level, um, maybe just come back and I'll take you to the next level. I'm, I'm thinking I'll do a beginner course at some point, but yeah, it would take a bit of time. So... And I don't really have too much time at the moment. So I'm just selecting all that and that looks pretty good. I might just hold shift and I might just remove that and that. Because we don't want it to be beveled at the end, at the termination point. Cool. So selecting all the edges, we are now going to go to the bevel modifier. I think the shortcut's B, but to be honest, I don't really worry about that. And we're just going to add a little one. And I'm just like clicking and dragging and then holding the uh, well using the scroll wheel to control the amount of segments and that controls how smooth things are um, and then I'm going to change this to I'm going to have a look at these modes I haven't really what's with percent yeah that's better I think percent is better because otherwise it does it uh, non-uniformly so that looks pretty good I mean, it's subtle. You probably would never notice, but uh, my brother would argue you would. He's in 3D art too. Um, so that's pretty good. So that's going to be the fridge. Okay. Um, and then the other side, eh, why not? Why don't we just add one there as well? Cool. Let's just make this symmetrical for the hell of it. So that's looking pretty decent. I like the um, I like the uniformity. So what we're gonna do um, is add a little bit of detail to this upper cabinet. So if I select the bottom of this and just move it up um, 20 mil ish, what that means is that we don't need handles here. We can just kind of grab them and pull them, pull them up. And it's the same here, like all of these. What I'm, what I'm actually going to do here is um, I'm going to insert some edge loops here. And then I'm going to just move that down slightly. And then I'm going to insert some edge loops. And, and I'm just snapping to the top of that. I'm going to move that down. Actually, I'm going to go into X-ray so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to insert another one on the top of that. And then where's the top of that? And then that one's good. So if I select what the edge loop we just created, and I go out of that mode, I'm just going to extrude this back. Whoa, what happened there? Jeez. Why is extrude not working? There we go. I'm going to extrude this back. And the reason why is because I actually want to be able to see a little bit behind um, through that gap so that it indicates that a hand could actually come in there and and grab and pull the, the drawer out. So why is extrude not working? There we go. So I'm going to do the same for that. Cool. Looking pretty good. Um yeah, yeah, I like that. So we're going to we're going to stop here. Um and next week we're going to be working on the island and then we're going to do a, a round of texturing. So we're going to add the UVs and the the nice timber detail to the uh the kitchen cabinets and all that all that good stuff so i will see you next week um and i'm really excited for it i hope you guys have a good week and yeah we'll see you then cheers